Welcome to our Taking Stock video for the week ending the 30th of August 2024. I'm Ken Trin, Head of Research at Stock Doctor, and joining me today is our Senior Equities Analyst, Jason Yin, to discuss all things share market. How are you, Jason? Reporting season has been quite busy. I hope uh, you've had some sleep. Oh, it's definitely been an interesting couple of weeks, Ken, and I'm sure there's plenty of stories we're going to share later this episode. Yeah, definitely, uh, Jace. But before we get started, just a quick yet important reminder, the information we provide today is of a generic nature and therefore shouldn't be taken as personal advice. Remember, shares are volatile, so any past performance figures displayed shouldn't be relied upon as a guide for future performance. Well, Jace, um, also just a reminder, we are conducting our virtual masterclass session in October, and that's for those who missed out on our event in Sydney and Melbourne earlier this year. So, Remember, it's designed to help you master Stock Doctor so you can maximize your membership and take control of your investments for the year ahead. Tickets are selling quickly, so uh, jump on board if you haven't done so. Well, Jace, the reporting season is pretty much over, and um, I'm starting to see a few themes emerge. Overall, inflationary cost pressures, they've been easing, allowing businesses with high material and labor costs to meet expectations. And we saw this um, with an example from Star Grow Stock Brambles, which uh, came out with quite an impressive set of results. However, those exposed to housing construction, they continue to face headwinds. Uh, stocks like James Hardy, Fletcher Building and Blue Scope Steel all underperform market expectations. Yeah, that's an interesting observation, Kim. Property stocks in general, and including real estate investment trusts, have been under pressure from falling property valuations and also higher interest costs as well. Meanwhile, there are signs of consumer resilience, and this is especially across stocks like JB Hi-Fi, West Farmers, Super Retail, Step One, and also Breville Group. Yeah, that uh, segment uh, was quite mixed, the consumer segment. Oh, we also saw Domino's and Collins Foods, they uh, didn't meet expectations as well. But overall, mm. the best performing areas of the market came from the financial services. Also, the banks did quite well. Technology stocks, uh, consumer staples and telcos also uh, fared uh, pretty well as well. Some notable performance within our Stargrow stock universe here um, included Commonwealth Bank. We had Wise Tech, ProMedicus, Hub24, Challenger, Computer share, Telstra, Woolworths, and Coles, they all did quite well this reporting season. And also mentioned last week, the outlook guidance overall has been increasingly cautious leading into the FY25 earnings downgrades of around 5% across the board. This means that the earnings growth expectations for the market this financial year is forecast to grow around 3% compared to expectations of 8% growth prior to the start of the reporting season. You can see on the chart on screen, and this compares the earnings growth projections broken down into the high level sectors. Notice how banks had a positive earnings revision while resources fared pretty worse with a lot of those earnings expectations being revised downwards. And that's a very interesting chart, Jace, showing how earnings growth forecasts have pulled back for most sectors over the reporting season and confirming that disconnect between fundamentals and share prices at the moment. But let's turn now to some of our star stock highlights for this week. Um, an interesting stock to make waves was tourism operator Kelsium Group, KLS is the code. The stock was sold down after it missed market expectations and the company has been dealing with rising operational costs and a slower than expected recovery in its tourism markets. Investors are also worried about the potential impact of higher interest rates on its debt levels as well, which could squeeze margins even further. So what should potential investors do now with this stock? Yeah, it's uh, Kelsian has been a, a tough call, Ken. Um, if investors are trend sensitive, then you'll need to perhaps sit on the sidelines given that it has breached the SD30 TSR. Uh, however, for those looking at this stock as a potential opportunity, Perhaps wait for our analysis because it's still under review right now and we're still trying to measure up to see if it can actually satisfy our style growth criteria. Yeah, um, it's important. We're assessing those metrics, uh, Jace, uh, with earnings revisions coming down and net profit margins quite slim. Investors will need to be cautious here. Let's um, now shift gears to salary packaging business, Macmillan Shakespeare. The stock has been on a bit of a roller coaster ride lately following their results. What's driving this volatility? 
Well, there were a lot of moving parts in the Macmillan result, Ken, and, and it's always quite difficult to, to analyze. Um, the company posted a pretty solid earnings update. There were some concerns around the sustainability of this growth, particularly in its salary packaging and Novate at leasing segments. Uh, investors were also a little bit rattled by management's cautious outlook, which hinted at potential headwinds for regulatory changes and also competitive pressures in the space as well. Yeah, definitely a company we'll keep a close eye on, Jace. It has a strong business model and, and it's well managed, but uh, the near-term risk could continue to weigh on the share price. And if we see further volatility, it might present a buying opportunity for those who believe in that long-term story. However, it's important to be mindful of the regulatory risks, which could impact future earnings. That's right. That's right. Now, looking into the week ahead, there's no star stocks expected to report, although a few income stocks are going ex-dividend, and these include Endeavor Group, Woolworths, and also Super Retail. In Under the Microscope this week, we take a closer look at online lottery reseller and platform operator Jumbo Interactive. The code is J-I-N. This one's been... A hot topic lately, Jason. You've been following it very closely. What's the story here? Well, Jumbo Interactive is quite an interesting case, Ken. As an online lottery reseller, it's been labeled a growth stock due to its ability to scale its platform and also capture more market share. However, recently, the stock saw a pretty negative share price reaction after the release of its guidance, which came in below market expectations. And this led to a wrath of negative earnings revisions with the market now questioning whether the company can sustain its momentum over the short term. Yeah, that's uh, definitely concerning, Jace. Growth is now expected to decline to be negative this year with return on equity also uh, falling to about 38%. Are there any drivers that can help the company recover from this? Yeah, there's a, there's a number of drivers that, that management can, can actually enact or, or action here. Um, while the negative earnings revisions have dampened expectations, Jumbo still has a lot of growth potential, particularly through its international expansion and also its platform services division. However, investors need to temper their expectations and be prepared for slower growth rates in the near term. And this is because the FY24 period had one of the largest record periods of large jackpots and these large jackpots being those above $15 million. So that means on a mathematical level, the probability that we'll see the same number of jackpots or even a higher number of jackpots in FY25 is relatively low, which prompts a bit of normalization in terms of the frequency and also the overall impact on lottery ticket sales. The other one to be mindful of is that the key growth avenue lies in the company expanding its reach on the online lottery space. And this is especially in markets outside of Australia and also in enhancing its technology platform to capture more of that business to business clients as well. Yeah, there are some strong growth avenues there, Jason. This could potentially lead to that recovery in earnings growth as we can see under financial year 26 in Stock Doctor. And if we can focus on the dividends now, with free cash flow expected to decline, uh, should investors be worried about the sustainability of that dividend yield currently at around 5.7%? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question, Ken. Um, from our perspective, we don't feel the decline in free cash flow is really a concern because the dividend yield seems relatively sustainable for now. You've got to remember Jumbo has a very solid cash position and a history of very disciplined capital management. In addition, the payout ratio at around 76% is also not very stretched as well. So we don't really see that as a massive issue. Yeah, they are in a quite a strong financial position, Jace. Um, it's also conducting this on market share buyback. So mm. that might be a positive signal that management is comfortable with the company's balance sheet situation and potentially see value in their shares at the current price. I notice also that this is a founder-led business with CEO Mike Viverka, who continues to have skin in the game with the holding of around 14%. How much confidence do we have in Mike to steer the ship through these turbulent waters? Well, Mike's had a really solid track record. He's built the company from the ground up and there's a real deep understanding of the business. And I feel like that's a major asset to the firm. However, much of Jumbo's earnings are beyond his control. So for example, Mike cannot control the frequency of large jackpots and when they happen. And also it's pretty difficult when you're up against a gambling heavyweight such as the, the Lottery Corp because the renegotiated fees that occurred during 
the ownership of Tabcorp and how much they they could charge on on these lottery tickets. But what he has been able to achieve, Kian, is achieve international expansion, particularly in the UK and also in Canada, as well as the development of that SaaS business and SaaS platform, which has been able to generate income by licensing the lottery software to charities and also government organizations, which has been a, a real positive for the company. Yeah, hopefully that will uh, come through with more growth in the future. But the stock is now trading at a discount to valuation. And this could represent opportunity for investors who are confident in that growth profile of the business, but also understand the risks. With many stocks having sold down significantly over the reporting season, a useful question this week for our members is, how can investors identify a value trap compared to an opportunity? Well, firstly, a value trap is a stock that looks cheap, but uh, there may be a good reason. For example, it could be financially unhealthy. A value trap tends to have elevated active risk that could potentially derail the earnings and dividend outlook, leading to further share price declines in the future as well. Yeah, that that's right, Ken. And, and it's always very easy to identify these value traps um, with hindsight, right? So if a stock has declined quite significantly, Sometimes the easiest way to determine whether it's a value trap or an opportunity is like what you said before, to look at golden rule one, which is financial health. It is a value trap if the financial health is weak and trading at a significant discount because it means it has a lot of insolvency risk baked into that operational model. Yes, uh, thanks, Jason. For those stocks that are also financially healthy, though, investors can also identify the risks of value traps using our key metrics under golden rule three. For instance, negative earnings revisions indicate that there are fundamental issues that have driven the share price lower. So it's important for investors to conduct due diligence on these negative earnings revisions. Are they short term or are they more structural in nature? And that could lead to uh, problems later on. A good example here is APEN, an X-Star stock providing language data sets for artificial intelligence businesses to train their models now. It largely relied on five global customers, including Microsoft, Apple, Meta, Google, and Amazon. But uh, over time, these uh, customers, they quickly moved away from the reliance of ad-driven marketing and AI because they can invest in it themselves. Yeah, that, and, that, and that's a very interesting example that you bring forward as well, Ken. Mm -hmm. Another thing to remember is that value traps tend to occur outside of our star stock universe. So you'll need to conduct your own due diligence uh, for any stocks that, that we do not cover. Um, first thing you have to do is obviously understand why there are negative earnings revisions by referring to company announcements under Golden Bull 8. Another interesting thing to look at is under Golden Rule 4, which is short interest and this reflects a level of negative sentiment among the institutional investor crowd. Yeah, also uh, dig into Golden Rule 7 as well and find out whether there are any key management changes or if there has been large share sales by the directors as well. Yeah, good point. And of course, opportunities tend to occur when our star stocks are sold down significantly, especially if the earnings revisions have remained relatively stable. For example, a company like ResMed, when investors lost a lot of confidence because of the impact of weight loss drugs, only for that share price to recover sometime down the track. Yeah, definitely. And uh, if you are still unsure, you are more than welcome to contact our research team and they'll be able to provide you with a rundown on the risks of those businesses. That's all we have time for today. And uh, thanks, Jace, for your insights. Thanks, Ken. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure to be on. And there was a lot of details that, that we went through today as well. Yeah, it's going to be a busy week this week as we uh, finalise the results from the reporting season. But uh, just a reminder, again, you know, our masterclass event in October. So uh, purchase your tickets if you haven't done so. And lastly, you would have all noticed that there is a refer a friend promotion with the grand prize being that luxury winery experience at Penfolds McGill Estate in South Australia. So our business grows because of you, our members, and we appreciate your ongoing support and loyalty. Have a happy, healthy and prosperous week ahead. Mm -hmm.